As a high school student, Pallav Nadhani hated making charts on Excel for school assignments. His discomfort with the features made him realize a potential business opportunity and he went on to develop a charting solution, Fusion Charts Technologies in 2002 when he was just 17. Today, the charting software is used across 118 countries by over 23,000 clients, 85% of whom are Fortune 500 companies besides NASA, the US Federal Government, the World Bank and the UIDAI in India. In 2008, the trio of Anish Reddy, Krishna Mehra and Ajay Modani saw a key pain point with local retailers who had no ability to engage with their existing customers. So they founded Capillary Technologies, whose intelligent customer engagement suite software builds a world of data and intelligence around each customer using mobile phone numbers as identifiers. This new solution enabled retailers to better understand their customers, track their behavior and deliver personalized offers based on Capillary's predictive analytics capability. Okay, great. It's uh, awesome to have a couple of uh, product entrepreneurs who have broken into uh, the, the top rungs of uh, entrepreneurship here. Now, quick question. Both of you all have a connection here to Kolkata. What's in the water in Kolkata that brings out product entrepreneurs? <laughs> Basically for the couple of reasons, like it's uh, near to Kharagpur from where we graduated and got the seed funding so that we thought, okay, we'll hire a couple of uh, interns and save money so that uh, we'll uh, build the company. And then Kolkata, like uh, hiring was uh, very low for the sales guys, etc. So for the first 15 years of my life, I was actually in a small town in Bihar called Bhagalpur. And my dad used to run a bunch of businesses there, starting from uh, civil real estate to computer training academy. And then when the web came in India, he started a web design agency. Uh, naturally, Bhagalpur did not have a lot of clients, so he shifted to Calcutta. And we shifted along with him. And at that point in time, I was moving to a new school, obviously, after my class 10, which was Lamar India. And here was a small town boy who had an aspiration to be like a city boy. So uh, my business was actually not meant to be a business, but it was just a, a way to be, make me pocket money. And that's how the journey started. So many patterns that you had to discover from scratch, right? There were no role models in Kolkata that you could talk to. Uh, there were certainly no organizations that did meetups of any kind, right? So tell me, how did you kind of iterate through? You, you did a lot of iterative design, lean design, in, before it was called that even, right? Let's just take an example. Like when I hired people, I did not even know that something called an HR policy. I was all of 17, actually 19 then. I did not know people need to take leave. So I said, you know what, let's just get people and get them to work on the most important thing, which is making products. So eventually the goal was always uh, building products and getting to as many customers. So when the goal was that everything later came around that. So we did a lot of experiments, but we had the misfortune of firing people on 1st of January because, again, I did not know it's a bad day to fire, and a bunch of such stupid mistakes in hindsight, but I think that's what has made us as a company. So every single point in time, we were doing a lot of things, and we were failing fast. You wore lots of hats uh, for, for the longest period, right? So for the first three years, uh, it was just me working alone in my bedroom, uh, which kept the cost low, which means right from my first sale, I was profitable. I was doing all the uh, coding, sales, marketing, talking to customers, all that. Uh, and then the first employee I had at that point, we did not even have an office. So he worked from my bedroom for four months. So that was the beauty of being young because you don't have anybody else in the bedroom, so you can utilize the space. And uh, after that, uh, we got our first office. So uh, this was again Calcutta. So we bought our first office for 10 lakh rupees because the building was slightly tilted. I said, you know what, we are in the ground floor. We'll have enough time if something happens to the building. So all of that happened in a very, very lean way. And throughout, we were having initially general who would come and help me and later they uh, we would hire specialists for different kind of uh, the roles that we had. How many customers did you have at that point? No. So at, uh, this was 2005, we had a couple of thousand customers at that point. A couple of thousand customers. Yeah. Where were they? All over the world? Mostly outside India. So um, US, UK, Canada and most of these guys would discover us on the web. Uh, so one of the things which we did is right from day one, uh, we were inspired by global companies and we tried to project an image like a global company even though the world, so the world did not know it's just a teenager sitting behind a computer in a bedroom. So we had to project the best image we could and uh, we firmly believed in this that on the internet no one knows you are small. So try to look as good as you can. How are you positioning yourself today? You know, you're still very young. You're really, truly the young Turk among these 13, right? The youngest. <laughs> yeah, still in my 20s, so that works. So, uh, in terms of company, like we have 23,000 customers, 85% uh, of Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we touch almost half a million developers. We uh, our ch product generates over a couple billion charts every single month. So. Uh, 
while it's a very niche category, but it's a very interesting category, especially how data is being more and more, uh, imp data is more important to the businesses and uh, for data to be consumed easily, visualization is the second most important thing thereafter. Got it. And Ajay, how about yourself? Tell us a little bit about that early insight, customer insight. You all struggled a lot to get the product uh, to the right fit, right? Right, like uh, the current uh, product is our third product basically. We started with the, you can say, SMS based uh, deal platform uh, in 2008. Tried for around four or five months uh, and uh, we got hardly any SMS on their platform. Then we moved to the traffic police, uh, Kolkata police, uh, SMS based traffic management. Then we sit around like 10 days in uh, Kolkata police uh, office, uh, day in, day out, uh, maintaining the complete uh, data, and then maintaining the complete platform. In Durga Puja, we realize, okay, India, like, uh, hardly any people are sending SMS uh, and get the information. And Airtel and Voda sent around 10 million SMS at that time to popularize our service, but no result, no revenue model. Then, uh, at that time, we started meeting, like, door-to-door, uh, -door every retailer, okay, what's your uh, pen point, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Then we got to know, okay, retail wants a uh, very small uh, service, as soon as customer leaves, uh, can customer get the SMS, thank you for shopping with us. And from that point, uh, we build up the complete uh, loyalty and customer engagement solution. And the funny part is, like, we started selling this service for 200 rupees in Kolkata. And believe me, like, uh, people are saying it's too expensive. Like, uh, they will hardly pay 50 rupees or uh, 40 rupees kind of uh, thing for that service. That was 200 rupees a store per month. Per month. Uh, <laughs> sure. And they thought it was too expensive. <laughs> I think, like, too expensive. Excellent. Then we moved to Bangalore. And then uh, in Bangalore, we realized, okay, 2000 is also very cheap. So we started selling for 5,000 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And then you moved to New York and you got American Express now. And then uh, other cities in dollars now, <laughs> obviously. So let's talk a little bit about funding and, you know, you'll have very contrasting paths to success. I love you have bootstrapped from 16 uh, to where you are today and you haven't taken any investors on board. And whereas uh, you've gone from yeah. early IIT accelerator model, let's say, to uh, angel, angel investing, yeah. IEM. Uh, to VCs and then a strategic also now, right? Like only IPOs left, I guess, and maybe <laughs> PE in between. We started uh, in 2008, uh, like uh, all the three, like uh, hardly any savings from the job because one year, like uh, how much you can save in one year. So we got the seed funding from uh, Kharagpur and in 2009 and uh, we got the Q prize uh, award in India basically. So we got $100,000. And again, like building an enterprise company required like lots of uh, teams from support to operations to servicing to then the complete product management and marketing. So initial investment is quite high. So that's why like in 2012 we again uh, go to the Sukhoi and Norwest and then moving on. And Pallav, how about yourself? So I think that when I started in 2002, um, I had not heard about venture capital and venture capitalists had not heard about Calcutta. And by that time we had enough money in the bank from our cash flows, um, we did not need money. So, so tell us about that first check. You got some $15 check. What happened to it? So one, at that point in time, our product was online, but we did not have payment gateways because payment gateways were not commodity like it is right now. So we would ask customers from uh, US, UK, wherever it is to uh, send a check. The check would be for $15 because that was the price of the license. They would actually incur a cost to send the check, let's say, even if it's postal, a few dollars here and there. Uh, the first check which we actually deposited in our bank incurred a charge of $35. Bank charges. <laughs> so I made a loss on my first sale. Talk about, talk about reverse revenues. <laughs> Excellent. And then, but then that was, that was just the beginning for you, right? That was the first check. Tell us how much you raised in revenue, right, uh, before you hired your first salesperson. So we actually hired our first salesperson, and this is counterintuitive after we got 10,000 customers because we were a marketing-fueled and sales-fulfilled company. So our sales was only in India. Even today, we don't have any uh, person outside India. So after 10,000 customers, and we had almost $4 million in, fund, uh, in revenue there. Very cool. How about yourself, Arjun? <laughs> like, uh, we hired, uh, you can say, like, uh, initial sales was under founders only, then after 2010, we hired, uh, like, people from, uh, like, uh, every country, we hired the local people to make sure that we scale up, basically. Because our model is completely fit on the street. It's not like a digital marketing or thing. You, you, you have as your partner and your co-founder, your dad, right? And how has that worked out and what's the future now for you? In terms of working with that, I mean, it's a fantastic uh, experience because more so in India, typically sons and dads don't talk on a regular basis, or at least when I, I've seen that. So when you're in business every single day, something happens, you've got to pick the phone and talk to your dad. So that works well. Uh, well. And we have a clear areas of responsibility. So I handle the product and the marketing. He handles all the uh, finance and sales. So every single day we have to sync up and uh, 
this relationship just goes on stronger. So I absolutely recommend it to anybody who's going to try it. One of the things that uh, we'd like to encourage, obviously, is much more product entrepreneurship. You know, I think there's a huge opportunity to build another big, uh, huge industry out of India. And you all are the stars of that. What, what guidance would you have for young entrepreneurs who are jumping in? Customer feedback is the most important part. And focus on the product uh, because uh, we have tried in India, like every retailer will want a different service or different uh, product. And for a product company, it's not possible to build different, different uh, things. So today also we maintain a single version and single thing across all the 175 brands and everything. Yeah. Like speaking purely from a product perspective, the only advice I do a lot is uh, if you're not ashamed of the first version of your product, you're shipping too late.